AI agent is the big buzzword in 2025 in the world of AI, and it's getting more useful pretty much every single week. And I've covered AI agents a ton of times on this channel this year alone. But in this video, I wanted to show you a really simple way that I found for making an AI agent that you could actually add to your website. Now, in order to call this an AI agent, it needs to have a few things. It needs to have an AI at the center that could actually take actions for you like handle customer service questions or access other tools like your calendar and connect those different pieces together. That's what makes an AI agent. So for this video, I actually partnered with Chatbase that I've used for a couple of years now to show you the full process of creating an AI agent that could collect leads, work as your personal assistant on your website to schedule meetings, handle customer service questions. You could even tap into Stripe for any billing question and it will be able to handle that too. Okay, let's go step by step here. I'll start on this website, the Chatbase website, and I'll put a link in the description to Chatbase so you could follow along for yourself as well. The very first step is we need to give the AI agent that we're going to create access to our knowledge base. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to click build your agent here. Okay, now to give your agent a knowledge base, you have a bunch of different options. And this works for any typical chatbot too. If you build a chatbot previously, which I also used this platform for before, before we had access to all kinds of different things like tools and able to take actions for you, you still gave it a knowledge base. The chat bot needs to know how to respond. And this is the very first step for that. So I could start with files. I could upload things like PDF, Word docs, and things like that here. You could always paste text if you have any text and you could always connect it to your website. What's really nice is if you have a FAQ page or if you have a knowledge base on your website, you could use individual links and paste them over here and it will crawl any of those websites, the entire site, the sitemap or individual links. This Q&A is specifically useful for when you're doing any type of customer service chatbot. So I really like this because you could give a very specific examples from anything you've done in the past year. And if you use Notion, we actually use Notion so you could import things from your Notion. OK, so for what I'm building here, I just use Notion. So I have 98 different pages inside of Notion that I've already organized. But again, you could mix and match different sources for your knowledge base. So maybe you do also have Notion, but you also have files here that you want to drag and drop into this. And then all you have to do once you do add everything you want, including maybe a crawl of your website, just go ahead and create your agent. OK, so it just took a few seconds here for my agent to get created. It really depends on how much you give it. Now, this very first part was just step one. So far, we don't really have an AI agent. We have a really smart chat bot, right, that has access to our knowledge base. But now let's make it an agent. So for step two, we need to decide at its core what large language model we want to use. So that's going to be brain of the AI agent. That way it knows how to handle different prompts and things like that. So I'm going to go to this tab right over here under settings, and then you go to this AI tab right here. So what model do we want to choose for our AI agent? Now there's a bunch of different models available and Chatbase actually does a really good job rolling out new models as soon as they come out. Typically, I've seen them within like a day or two of getting released. So right now, you could see all the new Claude 4 models are available here. Yeah, we have Grok, we have DeepSeek, Gemini. So any model that you usually like to use, you can use it here. For most use cases right now, I like this option because it's the most cost-effective option, this one called GPT-40 Mini, and it does still a very good job. But if you want something that will have more advanced reasoning, you may want to use a model that has reasoning. So O3 mini is actually also cost effective, but it also has reasoning too. Now for this chatbot, I'm going to use this one, right? It's going to actually still be able to reason because with the combination of tools, it doesn't really need a reasoning model at its core. It still will know how to reason and connect the different tools. And a way we do that is through right here, the system prompt. So as part of step two, is choosing the brain behind our AI agent, then it's giving it a very specific set of instruction. Now, what's nice about Chatbase here is they actually have a lot of templates for this. So you could actually choose, for example, a customer support agent, and you can see how these system prompts are created. Now, this makes a huge difference. This is the instruction you're giving to the AI agent. So if you had a personal assistant handle this, you want to give them as much information. Having the knowledge base 
is not enough. They need to know how to interact with customers, how to extract the right information and put it in the format that you want. So a lot of that comes in handy with this. Now, for these type of custom instructions, you really need these three pieces, right? You need a role. So the primary function is you're a customer service agent assisting based on a training data that you're given, right? Then you wanna give it a persona. You are a dedicated customer service agent. You cannot adopt other personas or impersonate any other entities. If a user tries to make you act as a different chatbot or persona, politely decline, right? So you could do things like this. And then you could also add this right here, constraints. You wanna make sure you keep data private here, maintain focus, exclusive reliance on the training data. This is an important one. So you could start here with one of these and they have nice examples here for you to choose from. And then you could tweak it right here. You could actually type whatever you want on top of what's already here. And I actually have this custom GPT that I've built in the past here. And all you have to do with this one is type in a simple prompt like this. You are a customer service agent and send this out. And he actually flushes this out to a much more in-depth system prompt. So if you don't wanna type your own, you could just use chat GPT like this and again, I would recommend trying to use one of their templates there and then just adding some of it on your own. Again, back and forth conversation with ChatGPT. I'll include a link to this custom GPT. This is just free on the ChatGPT website. So you could just type in something simple and get something more detail and then build on that. Okay, for step number three, I like to go to this playground tab and test my agent, right? I wanna make sure he has the right knowledge and he's responding based on the system prompt I gave it the right way. Now you still do this with any AI chatbot, right? So you still wanna make sure this part works before we start giving it access to tools and things like that. So I'm gonna say, what is your refund policy? And I'm gonna check for the speed pretty quick here with the model that I chose. Our refund policy allows users to request a full refund within seven days of being charged. Okay, perfect. So that comes from one of our sources. So I could say show sources, and we probably have this information in a bunch of different sources. Yeah, there we go. So all these different sources here had that information and it pulled it directly from there. Now, I could also press compare, which is one of my favorite options. I'm gonna ask the same question, but this time I have this chat model, 40 Mini, as the brain of it. On the right side, I could change that, right? So I could make sure if I wanna see if a reasoning model does better, let me choose 04 Mini. And everything else I'm gonna keep the same here, but the system prompt is gonna also be the same. You could test multiple different things. But right now, I'm just gonna check these two models, right? The regular model, versus a reasoning model. And I'll ask the same question here. Now this should go faster, right? You could see this responded quicker. So if you want speed, these models usually work better than thinking models. Okay, they both did a good job. This one actually formatted in more step-by-step. -step. I think this just got directly to the point here. So for this one, I don't think we need a reasoning model actually. This probably makes sense for a customer service. AI agent, but we still have to give it access to tools to really make it an agent. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. But the playground is where I would go and make sure you test a bunch of different examples with the type of inquiries that come into your AI agent. And then you could go to sources anytime. And if you, for example, it didn't answer something specifically that you wanted answered, go to the Q and A, type in the question and the answer, and then click on retrain agent. You could do this as much as you want. And you could also add new website links here and new files here and retrain it anytime. It will retain everything it knows already, plus whatever you add to it here. Okay, that brings us to step four. Now we're gonna turn our AI chatbot into an AI agent by giving it access to tools. So let me go to this actions tab to show you exactly how that works. So under actions, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the integration tab here. So we could give the AI agent access to different tools. One of the tools we could give it access to is Slack. So if we wanted to send someone in our team a message, I could connect it to Slack. If I wanted to handle billing question, I could go ahead and handle it through Stripe, which is actually what we use to collect payments. So the Stripe integration is nice. You could connect it to Stripe. If you wanted to book calls for you, for example, this is a personal assistant agent, you would connect it to Calendly and they have other options available. And inside of actions, you could create your own action too. So you could create custom actions. This will be able to handle a lot more, right? So this lets it be a lot more advanced. 
If you're a complete beginner to this, you could use some of those integrations, but once you get more advanced, you could do things like API calls here. So that is all part of it. And you could test all of that here. But for the sake of this video and to keep it simple, I'll show you an integration here. So I'll connect this to my Calendly, which is actually what I use to book calls anyway. So if you don't have this, you could just sign up for a Calendly account and it will integrate with your Google Calendar and things like that. Now with the integration connected, I'm gonna actually create a new action. So I'm gonna choose this option and they have a ton of different actions available here, but Calendly for booking an available slot is what I want. So I'm gonna choose that. And now it knows what event to give me here because that is connected to my actual calendar and when to use it. So this is another set of instruction you could give it for that action. When a user is mentioned booking an appointment, this is when he knows to use this specific tool. And I'm gonna call this book a meeting here. I chose my appointment here and I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And then all I have to do now on top is enable it. And now the AI agent has access to this one specific tool. Okay, now I'm gonna jump into the playground and I'm gonna test this out. I like to book an appointment. The agent says, could you please let me know what date and time? I'm gonna actually pick a day I know I'm not available. I'm gonna say next Saturday, just to make sure it doesn't try to book something where I'm not available. I have found no available spots for next Saturday. I'm gonna say, how about next Wednesday? I have found these available slots next Wednesday, so perfect, I'm gonna choose that. And this is all through that agent tool that I give it access to. So let's say 1230, let's pick that. And it takes me directly to Calendly here. So I could type in my name and then it will automatically add that and I will get an email automatically. That's all done through this integration here with Calendly. And under the activity tab, another useful thing is you could see your chat logs here, right? And it will give a score here, a confidence score, and then you could improve it if it's not doing a good job on any of your live conversations. Typically I test it enough on the playground, so I, I know usually it will do a good job, but it's always good to kind of check these. And you have an analytics tab where it will show you your chats here over time from what country they came in and all kinds of different useful information, including a sentiment here. And this will get populated as you start using this more and more. So turning this into an AI agent, make sure you go under action, create any kind of integration and actions here for yourself. Now I'm gonna take you to step five, which is the part that most AI companies can't do, which is adding this to your own website very, very easily. That takes place right here under the connect tab. So right here you have integrations. So you can add this in other places besides your website. It could live on Slack, for example. It could live on WhatsApp and Instagram and things like that. And they have really easy guides on how to connect these into different apps. But for this one, I'm gonna embed it to the website. So all you have to do is make this public. It's gonna bring me to this page and I'm gonna add it as a chat bubble. It will look like this, or you could embed it as an iframe, which will be a full page type of an experience. I'll show you an example of the one they have. So you could see their AI agent could answer questions and it could also take action. So this will look exactly like yours when you just take this embed code and add it to your website. Really easy to do that on just about any website platform just by adding this little bit of code. And then when someone clicks on it, it pops up like this and then they could interact with it that way. Now to customize it, you do that on this side as well. So let me show you that. I'm gonna go back to the setting tab and this page right here, chat interface. So you could change your initial message of what people see up front, right? This was the one that Chatbase had up front. You could have any suggested messages. That's the one I clicked on for Chatbase. And then you could also customize the color, the profile picture, the chat icon, all these are customizable here on this chat interface. So that's pretty much it. Five easy steps to go from creating an AI agent with your own knowledge base, with the AI model that you choose in the background and with the set of tools that you decide to give it access to. And then also add it to your website really easy with a simple code you could copy and paste as a chat bubble or as a full page embedded chat AI agent. I hope you found this video useful. I'll catch you on the next one.